Hi, this is Tristan from CardioCritic.com and the product you can see in front of me is the New Balance Run IQ. The New Balance Run IQ is an Android Wear sports watch. It's been developed in association with Intel, providing some of the internal hardware. It's also been designed with the help and cooperation of Strava, so the actual sports app itself uh, utilizes the Strava application and any data once you've loaded the product up is uh, automatically uploaded to the Strava website. It's got built-in GPS, obviously handy for running and cycling, and as you can see on the back, like so many other new sports watches, it uses an LED system for off the wrist heart rate, so there's no need there for a chest strap. There's the LEDs in action. If I place my fingers on there, it should within a few seconds pick up my heart rate. There's heart rate currently being acquired from my finger. Obviously it's not designed to take it from my finger but that goes to show it's accurate and representative from my finger. Also and something that's missing from some other brands of uh, Android Wear watch this one is fully water resistant so you can swim in the New Balance Run IQ. Okay so they're the key features. It's Android Wear, GPS, built-in heart rate, designed with Intel inside and runs with the Strava app and something I did miss and that's why these handy Bluetooth headphones are here. It uses the um, new, well, it uses the Google Play, the Google Play Music app to uh, provide music while you're training via Bluetooth uh, to any any compatible Bluetooth headphones. These ones uh, provided by New Balance for the test are excellent. These are designed by and uh, made by a company called Jabra who have uh, a long uh, history making sports headphones. Um, that They are excellent and if you're considering buying a pair, if you don't already have a pair, if you can get a deal with the watch and the headphones then that's something I would certainly recommend looking out for. Um, so you you sync your phone with your watch and um, download as many tracks as you want into the watch so then when you're training you can listen to your preferred music. Okay so let's take a quick look at the sports mode which is the mode which has been powered by the Strava app. So you can see on the front screen you can either get to it by pressing the app touch sensitive sensor there on the front or you can press the top right. Top right We'll start the app. Okay, second. Now it's loading the GPS. You can see there it says powered by Strava. And we've also got settings or start. Settings are quite limited. If we go into settings, we can see we have either run or cycle. And then we can have auto pause on or off for run and bike. And then you can choose your metric or imperial settings. So I'm keeping um, auto pause off because I'm inside and it will just keep on pausing. And we're going to put it, keep it in run mode. And it's still loading GPS, which it, uh, now that's good. It's, it's actually got the GPS, so it's now telling me to start your run. Um, bear in mind, I am inside. I do sit by a window, so um, it's it's good that it's picked up GPS, so it's ready to go. Now you'll notice there's an icon at the top, so you can choose your music. And you can go forwards and backwards on your tracks. You can also set the volume uh, from the bottom there. Um, I'm going to leave that for a second. We're going to start the run. Now again, I say press the screen or you can use the button on the side. I use the button on the side. And we are now exercising. If I put my finger on the back, it should hopefully pick up my heart rate. Remember, it's not designed to do that, but it generally does, which is good for illustrative purposes. Now you can see this, this is my pace here, minute mile pace. Um, you'll always get that when you're inside. It's it, it, any, any GPS will generally wobble around a bit while we're just sitting stationary. 
Um, it's not ideal. It would be better if it could filter that out, but it thinks I'm moving when obviously I'm not. Okay, so let's look at these key screens. You've got four screens in the Run IQ app. First one gives me my pace, time, and distance. Scroll across, we get your heart rate. Heart rate is great because you get five training zones, so at a glance you can see which zone you're in. Currently it's picking up 62 off my finger, which I would say is probably accurate. Once again, this gives you uh, your strides per minute. So again, this watch is designed as a runner's tool. Uh, strides per minute is your running cadence. So how many strides you're doing per minute. And then finally, this screen here now is just the uh, same information as on the first screen, but just in a different um, format. So now we've got running time, distance, and uh, pace on the bottom. So that's um, one of the things I would like you Balance to do is have an indoor mode that just lets you train without the GPS on. Because GPS obviously uses a lot of battery. If you are training indoors, save the battery life and um, uh, just use it in non-GPS mode. If there was one thing that would ask New Balance to consider, it would be that to have an indoor mode. I'm leaving the watch now just for a few seconds till it go sort of to sleep. Because what it does while you're training, um, it will go like that. Freeze the display, so it's still visible. I did a wrist gesture and so that woke it up. Um, it, it, if you've got wrist gestures off, then the screen will freeze and show you some metrics, but that refreshes, I think, about every 30 seconds or every minute. Um, I prefer to have a live screen with, with my real data on there, but obviously you can do that if you've got the wrist gestures on, or just tap the display and it will refresh the data for you. Okay, so let's go back down to music, pull that down, I can press play. Well, there's a tweet just come up there. Um, I can press play. That's now playing on my headphones. That's up volume and down volume. Obviously the headphones I've got, these the New Balance headphones they've sent me, are great, they've got an inline volume setting there anyway. And go back to my... Um, now this, this is something that was, I find a little bit frustrating. Um, sometimes I end up in the Strava wrap. I thought I was going to them, but I didn't, so we'll ignore that. So if I pull the screen down, we can go into music, currently music playing there. I've got volume left and right and I can pause. I can go forwards and backwards on the tracks as well. Okay, so that obviously definitely works. And then back to the training app. Um, the headphones that New Balance sent me have got volume there as well, which is just convenient. I like that. As I said, very good headphones. I've used the Jabra headphones before. These, these ones are excellent. Okay, so um, as I said before, you've got this start stop button here. So I can stop it. Activity paused. I can start it again. Or I can drop a lap with the bottom right. And all this data obviously will be synced up later when I finish the training session. So it tells me they've got two laps. And this is now my current lap time and distance from this lap. Okay, so that really is, a, it's, it's not a technical watch, it's just got the essentials, pace, distance, strides per minute, heart rate and training time. I'm gonna stop this now. Uh, that activity was not tracked because there's not enough GPS data. Again, uh, uh, this goes down to my point before about the non-GPS mode. We need a non-GPS mode. I'm sure that not everybody always runs outside, but you still want to track your exercise and your training time. Okay, um, let's stop the music. Sync data successful. So it's telling me anyway, although it said it hadn't been saved, it's saying the data has been synced with Strava. Um, 
and there now is the Strava screen popped up and my run is ready to view there's me on Strava okay so it's a bit odd that message then it just popped up um, something I'll probably feed back I've I've used the watch extensively I've used it but I've always used it outside I did use it and I did use it for a turbo training session it did record that quite well so um, yeah we would like to have non GPS mode please save confusion okay let's just take a quick look at the app two apps that we sort of are interested in one is the New Balance run app itself where we can set some of the main settings in the watch and then also connect to your Strava account and then the other one is obviously the Android Wear um, app where you can set up all your features and functions of the watch once you've once you've connected it to to Android Wear. So as I said before I think currently this uh, is running um, Android Wear 1.5 um, it will be able to be I believe upgraded to Android Wear 2 as soon as uh, possible. Um, with regards to heart rate and heart rate accuracy um, obviously that's quite critical now I've done several sessions with um, on a turbo trainer and it's been very good uh, plus or minus probably an average of one or two beats per minute over a chest up heart rate monitor the only problem at the time it suffers is outdoor when there's vibration If you take a look at these, this is the same ride last night, riding on my mountain bike. Now that is a Polar M10, sorry, M10, Polar H10, their new Polar heart rate sensor. Now I do this ride a lot and I know that for the effort I did yesterday, that, that was a nice easy ride with a friend, a social ride, 111 BPM average with 150 max. Now that's what the New Balance Run IQ gave me. Now there's definitely a couple of spurious spikes there. Um, you can see even at the start, they both start at the same time. There's, it does suffer through vibration on the wrist. Other wrist-based heart rate monitors do as well. However, I have to be honest and say that this is not one of the best. It's certainly not bad. And you can see this middle section here when we're on the smoother part of the ride is fairly representative of what we've got there but these bits here at the end and this bit at the start now this is downhill this all this bit for start is downhill and nice and easy so I don't know what's going on there but as I say it is quite quite wobbly ground so um, I'm afraid you know with regards to heart rate accuracy over many tests running mountain biking road riding and turbo training uh, the, the, the less vibration the better um, but overall I would have to say I could only give it probably 70% 80% maybe you know as a score so certainly something that um, I don't know who's, whose chipset they use in the uh, the New Balance watch uh, the Valencell is one that most people prefer um, obviously Garmin have their own and so do Mio which are both very good and so is the Polar one but um, and as is a TomTom so really not the best off the wrist heart rate sensor if you're mountain biking road biking on smooth road running on the road and uh, turbo training absolutely fine okay, let's just have a quick look at um, Android Wear if you're not familiar with it um, it if you know an Android phone that's what Android Wear is. You can just add apps to the watch, which are really good. So I've got the BBC in mine. Pop over there, BBC News. If you're into 
technology and wearable, wearable products is brilliant. Um, Google Music, I've added, an, I've got added a calculator. Scientific features. Um, obviously there's things like weather forecast, find my phone, Google Fit. These are all the Google pre-installed apps. You've even got uh, the maps on there as well. And it's why I find it quite hard to rate this watch because as a piece of Android wear technology, it's a lovely high quality product, nice, solid, but light, light, fairly light case compared to certain other ones I've definitely used. Um, great display, 400 by 400 resolution. It's a nice touch sensitive display. It works well. This very lovely soft silicon strap. Um, the charging system works well. Uh, obviously it uses this so that there's no plug on the back so that's why it's water resistant for swimming up to 50 meters. Um, the headphones, super quality. So all of it, you know, the Android Wear works well. Um, my only issues are with it, there's two, there's two or three problems. One is the the fact that you can't do a non-GPS training session, which is daft because that would really extend the battery life. Two is the accuracy of the heart rate, where there's, uh, when you're mountain biking or road riding with a lot of wrist vibration, it does suffer more so than other wrist-based heart rate monitors I've used. Um, and finally, and something I haven't mentioned, which I should have done earlier, is the general battery life. Um, I can... This is at 57% now. So I can take the watch from full charge, wear it throughout the day, and then go for maybe a one and a half, two hour bike ride. And when I get back after that ride at seven or eight o'clock in the evening, it will be down to maybe 12 or 15%. And it will be lucky to last the whole day with a two hour bike ride, both well, last for 24 hours. I would think if I did a two and a half hour ride, which I regularly do, um, I would probably have to put it on charge before I went to bed uh, and, I, and I wouldn't be able to have it um, uh, off charge during the night. So New Balance themselves say sort of 24 hours is achievable and that it has a potential for five hours of exercise use with GPS and heart rate. But as a, you know, I, I think the watch like this has to be able to be taken off the charger in the morning, fully charged and then it would be nice if it worked for one and a half days. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. My uh, battery camera just died. So this is just gonna draw this quick video presentation to an end. Um, this is the New Balance Run IQ Android Wear smartwatch, specifically designed with runners and cyclists in mind. It has built-in GPS off the wrist heart rate, is an Intel processor inside, currently Android Wear 1.5, upgradable hopefully soon to Android Wear 2. It's swim resistant to 50 meters, so you can just keep it on when you're in the pool. It's very well made, really comfortable silicon strap, super bright clear display, and wrist-based heart rate, so heart rate off the back here. And then for its sports application, it's powered by Strava. It's got three buttons on the side that make operating it a little bit easier. It can be used with any Bluetooth headphones. I recommend these New Balance Pace IQ headphones because they're excellent. And uh, you can listen to music while you're on the go using Google Music. And obviously being an Android Wear watch, you have access to the hundreds of Android Wear Google Play um, apps. So it's a hard one for me to give a review score to because I'm a pretty keen runner and cyclist. 
To be blunt, for me, it's not good enough because the battery doesn't last long enough. I need a watch that I can take away with me at the weekend and use for a two hour bike ride or a two hour run or even a three hour bike ride and the next day a two hour run without having to go on a charger. Um, the products like the TomTom Tom, uh, Adventurer, the Polar um, M200, uh, more non-Android where non smart watches so from Garmin things like the Garmin Vivo Active HR you know, they will last for days and days doing a couple of hours of exercise a day uh, these this just won't so for me it's not a watch for me however that doesn't mean it hasn't got its audience for people who want an Android Wear smartwatch that's water resistant with wrist based heart rate with GPS and a really good sports app for running outside or cycling outside um, maybe up to two hours of activity maybe maybe a little bit more and then accepting it's going to go on a charger every day then it's a good watch so you know it's New Balance's first smartwatch um, I'm sure there's a couple of things that they can improve on mainly for me battery life and a non GPS mode um, but other than that I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five review as with any product, some people would give it a five out of five because it will do everything they want to very well and more. Some people might only give it a one out of five because it just doesn't do everything for everybody. But um, if you fit the bill for the, uh, but if you've, but, for some people, people in the UK, park runners, people who you know run maybe 5k, 10k, once once or twice a week, uh, and they want to track that and then upload it to Strava, it's a great watch. Okay, thank you very much for listening. I'm Tristan from CardioCritic.com. Please pop over to the website. Visit us on social media, etc., etc. Thank you. Cheers. Goodbye.